Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Platform App Builder certification. I just recently took the exam and passed it, so now I am 2x certified, Salesforce certified. I am a Salesforce certified admin and now a Platform App Builder certified as well. If you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video if you find this content interesting, and we're just going to jump straight into it. So we're starting off here on the platform app builder trailhead page It's talking about the exam and we're about to look at the exam guide in just a second. So for recommended study material, we have the trail mix and I would highly recommend uh, using the trail mix as part of your study plan. It gets you some hand on experience using uh, the sandbox for the certification and some of the particular um, uh, things you're going to need to know. And then also the study for the platform app builder exam that you can utilize as well. And we'll go ahead and look at the exam guide here. So this is the exam guide. So the Salesforce app builder credential is designed for individuals who would like to demonstrate their skills and knowledge in designing, building, and deploying custom applications using the declarative customization capabilities of the Lightning platform. Basically, this certification will show you what you can do with inside Salesforce without having to utilize custom code, whether that's reaching out to a developer to do that for you or you doing it yourself. So here's some examples of the concepts you should understand to pass the exam. How to design the data model, user interface, business logic, and security for custom applications. Customize applications for mobile use. How to design reports and dashboards how to deploy custom applications. And then they talking about what audience this is for. Um, they recommend it for um, someone that has six to six months to one year experience building applications on the Lightning platform uh, or on similar techno technological platform. Uh, so the Salesforce platform app builder candidate has the experience, skills, and knowledge outlined below. So you're familiar with the capabilities of Lightning Platform, aware of Salesforce license types and related considerations, ability to design applications to support business processes and reporting requirements, uh, familiar with capabilities and customization uh, used to enhance mobile user experience, familiarity with the Salesforce deployment environments and the options available to deploy applications, and comprehensive uh, comprehension of the resources listed in the exam guide. So there's a kind of basic overview of who who's this uh, is intended for and what you'll need to know to pa uh, pass the exam. And uh, moving on here, here's the kind of juicy information about the exam. So it's 60 multiple choice questions and then there's five non-scored. When you take the exam, it's 65 questions. So time allotted is 105 minutes. The passing score is 63%, costs $200. If you fail the test, it's a $100 retake fee. And you can uh, do this on-site at a testing location, but I did it online proctored, and I would highly recommend it. You can kind of pick a time that works for you and the convenience of your home or wherever you're going to take this exam. And, of course, you can't have any cheap material uh, with you when you're taking the exam. So they list um, some recommended training here, trail mix and the super badge, and this link will be in the description uh, below as well, so you'll, you'll be able to get to that pretty easily. And here's the exam guide, and I'm going to offer kind of what my thoughts are as we I go through these on what kind of my experience was with the exam and what you really need to look out for to study, to pass this thing, right? So one of the sections that's 23% is the Salesforce Fundamentals. Now, if you haven't already taken your admin certification, I would recommend it before this certification personally because it covers everything in this section. The only difference, in my opinion, it does go a bit more in depth. So in the admin cert, you're going to hit that surface level and maybe a little bit lower. This one is going to ask more specific details about relationships between objects, what you can and can't do. Um, if you're switching from a master detail relationship between objects and you're wanting to change this to a lookup relationship, can you do it? Uh, if you can, what's the effects of that? What do you need to change? Is there is you're going to lose data? 
those are the type of questions you're going to run into with the uh, platform app builder certification so for the fundamentals given a scenario identify the boundaries of declarative customization and the use of for uh, pro programming uh, i can't even say that word programming customizations um, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's what you can do within the environment without having to get with a developer to uh, utilize custom code. Identify common scenarios for extending an org using the app exchange. Apply features and capabilities available to restrict and extend object, record, and field access. Very important. This is pretty heavy on the exam. In my opinion, you need a very good understanding of this um, the extending objects record and field access you need a great very good understanding for the exam given a set of business requirements determine the appropriate sharing model uh, they do have scenario based questions um, about the sharing models they're they're very tricky about how they it isn't just like um, there's two objects and there's object a and b and if a is deleted uh, all the values in object B are deleted as well. That's a master detail relationship, right? And they're not going to ask you those types of questions. I feel like on the admin cert, that's kind of what they ask you. But in this one, uh, it's going to be very kind of vague. And you have to really pay attention to the way the question's worded about what type of relationship it is. And it may even be like hinting at summing up object B to A which is a roll-up summary field, and uh, that means it's a master detail relationship. You can't have that on a lookup. So those little things um, you kind of have to pay attention to, so you're, you're going to want to study those a lot and have a very good understanding of it. Identify the features and capabilities available when creating reports, uh, reports, report types, and dashboards. Um, this is important. It wasn't super heavy on the exam. Uh, it was more about the objects. Uh, in my opinion, but there was a few questions about reporting. In particular, it was like um, utilized like a summary report. Um, it was asking about some uh, I can't remember the exact question, but it was uh, the answer was like some about it was a summary report is what you would need. So they're going to give you a scenario, and you need to tell them what kind of report to use for that scenario. Given a set of requirements, determine the appropriate global object specific actions and layouts to optimize self force mobile experience. Going to want to know that. The test is kind of pushing um, the, the mobile app experience as well. There wasn't a ton of questions about the mobile app, but you will need to know it, especially there are other versions of the test out there that you know I may not have seen, and they may be a little heavier on the mobile app. And then describe the customization use ch cases for chatter. Definitely are going to want to know that. It is going to be on the exam. Data modeling and management, 22%. So given a scenario, determine the appropriate data model. Given a scenario, explain the capabilities of the various relationship types, types and the implications of each on record access, interface, and reporting. Going to want to know that for sure. Uh, they have quite a few questions on the exam about that uh, as well. Uh, another scenario based here, determine the considerations when selecting or changing a field type. You're going to want to know this. You're going to want to know this. Talking to like, if you have, um, if you have a uh, text field, can you convert it to an auto number field? And if you can, what are the impl implications of that? Going to want to know questions like that. Um, maybe it's a formula field trying to convert it to another field. Can you even do that? those type of questions you're going to want to know. Explain the capabilities and considerations of the schema builder. That was on the exam. Make sure you understand schema builder. Given a scenario, determine the options and considerations when importing and exporting data, including the capabilities of external databases. There was only a couple of questions about importing and exporting data. It was on there. Um, it was actually more about importing, but you're going to want to understand data loader and data import wizard as well. So the biggest section on the exam is the business logic and process automation at 28%. So what does that mean? It means workflow, process builder, flow, approval process. These are the part of the biggest section here. So given a scenario, just demonstrate, uh, demonstrate the use of formula fields to meet stand, uh, stated business requirements. Determine the capability use cases and implementations of roll-up summary fields. 
the use of validation rules to meet the, the st uh, state of business requirements, determine the capabilities and use cases or approval processes, demonstrate the capabilities and use cases for workflow, flow, and process builder, given a set of business requirements, recommend a solution to automate processes while avoiding errors in automation. So what I will say about this section, the exam kind of caught me on, on a little bit of a surprise when I was taking it. The validation rules, you're going to want to know how to create, not, not just create validation rules, but scenarios like the actual coding of certain validation rules. Like if you want a date field that validates a field is, like you said, a date field and it needs to be two weeks after the date, you're going to need to know the code to put into that validation rule to set make that work and they're going to give you four options and two or three of them may look right and be very close to similar you're going to want to know how to distinguish the two there was multiple questions on this no lie i was very surprised they were that heavy on validation rules personally i expected it to be more flow heavy the admin exam to me seemed more flow heavy asking questions about that and there was there was a few questions directly related to flows I was surprised at how many validation rule questions there was, and I was also surprised that there was more process builder uh, questions as well. Uh, I was a little surprised by that. So you're going to please study how to write custom validation codes like, you know, what are the different um, variables you can use, like mathematical, logical, understand those and how to put those together. That'll help you a lot with this section. And then lastly, I didn't read this one here, recommend a solution to automate business processes while avoiding error, errors in automation. Moving on to user interface. I actually scored, I think the highest, I scored 90 percentile in this one right here and I was kind of surprised by that. But it kind of makes sense once you look at it if you've taken the admin certification. So let's go through this. Describe the user interface customization options Demonstrate the capabilities and use cases for custom buttons, links, and actions. Given a scenario, determine declarative options available for incorporating lightning components in an application. Describe the customizations available for incorporating custom lightning components in an application. So the reason why I say this kind of ties in with like the admin stuff is you really need to know custom buttons, links, and actions for the admin cert. Then in the admin cert, they don't really talk much about, there is lightning components you need to study for, but they don't really ask you about them. But in this exam, it was kind of lightning components heavy for this user interface section. So understanding like if you are building an app, you know, how can you set up a lightning component? What can you change? What are the visibility settings? Make sure you understand the visibility settings. They're going to quiz you on those pretty heavy. You know, if you only want this user to be able to see this component, how do you set that up? So you need to really understand how the visibility settings work for components. Yeah, I definitely want to study that. And then also describe the customization options available. Just like I was saying, you, you're going to want to know this. And then lastly is app deployment. So it's your smallest section. And to be frank with you, I put the least amount of time in this, but I actually scored pretty well on this section as well given a set of business requirements recommend solutions for key milestones considerations when changing uh when managing the application life cycle and various types of sandboxes so i actually have a video that i created uh it was while i was studying for this exam that talked about the four different types of sandboxes available in salesforce your developer developer pro full sandbox partial copy the reason i created that video is the admin cert kind of mentions it, but they're not going to quiz you on it. But for this exam, I found it extremely helpful to understand what those sandboxes are. And they're going to ask you at least a few questions about sandboxes and the deployment, what are your typical deployments will be. So understand wh what, what's the difference between a developer and a developer pro sandbox, for example. That would be great to know for this exam. Given a use case demo, uh, given a use case Demonstrate knowledge, viability, and troubleshooting when using change sets. Describe the use cases and considerations when using managed and managed package. Give it a scenario. Determine the appropriate deployment plan, which I already mentioned that. 
But these two, you're definitely going to want to know these. Like I said, it's only 10 points out of the exam, but they are going to ask you about change sets. There's a few questions on change sets, like what is an inbound change set type of question? And then also, which sandboxes can you do change sets for? Can I do a change set from my sandbox to any sandbox in the world? No, it has to be related to a the same production org. So those type of questions, you're going to want to know the answers to for that. And then also, what's the difference between a managed and unmanaged package? That was on the exam. I think there was only one question, possibly two. You're going to, you're going to want to know that as well. And to me, this section was probably the easiest to learn. It's very small, but it is very useful in a real world application. It isn't just like, oh, this was on the exam. Forget it. No, this is helpful for when you're actually in an admin job or you're working in another Salesforce position. It actually kind of helped me in my current job. So I would highly recommend learning this not only for the exam, but really kind of dig deep and it'll help you in the future in your uh, position. But those are the sections here. And then, yeah, I think this is just about maintaining your certification. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, my final thoughts about the app builder certification. I love the exam. Um, I think it's worth doing the certification if you're already in a Salesforce position. If you don't already have your admin certification, I would actually recommend you getting it first and then getting this one. I don't know if I would recommend getting the advanced admin before this. I kind of feel like this is a nice step before the advanced admin. I don't currently have plans to get my advanced admin certification in the future. I may, but this was a great certification. I'm doing a lot of uh, flow work right now, leading a project converting workflows to flow in my job. And I found that the business logic and process automation section was very helpful in my day job. So I think if you already are working as an admin and you don't have the certification, this is a great way to kind of add into your skill sets and um, grow in your career. So I would I highly recommend this exam. But if you've kind of made it all this way, please do me a favor, like the video, comment, and if you haven't done so, subscribe. I appreciate the support, and I will see you in the next video.